So this video we're going to go over how to actually input a logarithm on several different calculators when that logarithm does not start out as a base 10 logarithm, which is of course what we have a button for on each of these calculators. So let's start with explaining why this is what I'm using to test it. Because I mean I could just start hitting buttons but I chose this very specifically because it'll let me know if I've done it right by giving me an answer that's easy for me to understand. And that's because if we look at this, log base 3 of 81 equals x, here's our base, here's our argument, and here's our exponent. So if we rewrite this in exponential form, well, there's our base, that's 3. There's our exponent, that's x. And that would equal 81, our argument. 81 is 9 times 9, and 9 is 3 times 3. So 81 is 3 to the 4th. And that's one of those things that you may not know right away but it may be useful to have a list of powers of 2, powers of 3, and so on, so you can spot these right away. And since these now have the same base, I can see that x must be equal to 4. That's the number that'll make this a true statement. So now that I know this is one of the ones that has an integer answer, and the other nice thing is every integer in this problem is different. I've got a 3, I've got an 81, and I've got a 4. So this will let me know if I've done it correctly by seeing if I get 4. So first, I'm going to show you on this Casio. It is an FX-300ES. And this Casio actually has a button right up here for a log to an arbitrary base. It also has a regular base 10 button and a base E button for natural log. But it actually has a button here with a little frame for both the base and the argument. Or, yeah, the argument. So if I type that in, it gives me two blanks to fill in. And I can simply type in 3 and 81, and it'll give me 4. So this is easy mode. But a lot of calculators don't have a button like that. It's somewhat unusual. Even calculators that cost more than this Casio by other manufacturers may not have that particular button. It varies a lot by manufacturer and by what specific calculator you've bought. But you don't have to buy a whole new calculator just because your calculator doesn't have an arbitrary base because of something called the change of base formula. And what this says is, is that if I have a log base b for base to the a, sorry, of a for argument, that that's the same as taking the log base 10 of that argument divided by the log base 10 of that base. And for historical reasons, log base 10 is one of the easiest bases to find on a calculator. And that's the one they're going to tend to have built in. Some calculate, well, they'll also have natural log, which is ln. And you could do exactly the same thing with ln on top and ln on bottom for natural log if you prefer. As long as you use the same base both on the top and the bottom, you'll be fine either way. Um, before we had calculators, we looked up logarithms in big books of tables. And so they wanted to only have to print one set of logarithms in those tables rather than every possible set of logarithms in those tables. So it was much easier to do this and have it be a division problem for the person to deal with than it was to print an encyclopedia instead of a phone book, essentially. And that carried over to early calculators, and here we are decades later that we're still doing it old school. 
So here is another calculator where I'd need to use change of base formula. So this one for change of base formula, since it is log base 3 of 81, that's the same as log base 10 of 81 over log base 10 of 3. This went here, this went here, and these are now logs with no particularly special base, just log base 10. So, that means that I need to be able to put in kind of a stacked division problem into my calculator. So first we're going to look at that on kind of an intermediate calculator in terms of how friendly, user friendly it is to use. We're going to look at a TI30X2S, uh, I think is how that would be read. And on this calculator, it's pretty straightforward. Here's my log button over here, and like I said, I could use natural log instead if I wanted to. I'm not going to today. And I can simply put in log of 81 division symbol, because fractions and division are the same thing, just written differently, log base 3. And it lets me type in like an entire expression on a line like this. And that's one of the nice things about this calculator rather than the next one we'll see. Is, is that you can type in these more complicated expressions and see what you're doing. So, now I hit enter and I get 4. So this one, just by using the change of base formula, I was able to get the correct result. Here's my third calculator. It is a sharp EL-501X and it is not quite as complicated in terms of what kind of display it has. It has just a one line display and it doesn't show me what I've put in, it just shows me answers. And so if I try to type in an entire expression, it doesn't do it that way. It wants to have number and then what it's supposed to do with that number. So for example, when I hit log, it just kind of goes E, error, because it doesn't want to deal with the log of zero, that's not really a thing. So what we're going to do instead is we have to type in the number first. The good news is, is that it will keep track of what I'm doing and let me process the whole thing. It just isn't going to give me a lot of reassurances along the way. So instead I say 81, take the log of that. It spits out some big number. That's the log base 10 of 81 divided by, and it doesn't acknowledge that I've pressed that button, but it remembers it. 3 log, and it spits out the log of 3. And the good news is it has been keeping track this whole time, and when I hit equals, it will give me 4. So this one will do the same thing, but I have fewer reassurance markers. I don't really know that I'm getting it right as I go. So this one does also do that. If you had a calculator that did not store all those cal calculations, and you had to do each calculation in order. There is another way to do that, and I'm going to show you with this calculator what that strategy would be, because it's a workaround that you should know in case your calculator is even a little less complicated than this Sharp, but still has a logarithm button. Maybe you're borrowing an old school calculator that a parent or grandparent used when they were in school. Maybe you got your calculator, um, you know, as a hand-me-down. Maybe you just got one that they cheaped out on that for whatever reason. So what if you got one that doesn't store those other things and is just going to calculate whatever you just put in and you can't save anything? It's like that. Well, what you can do then is you want to look, and I'm going to zoom in a little more. You want to look for something like a memory button. These recall store memory. You'll see buttons kind of similar to that. They might have different names. You want some sort of I want to save something into memory explicitly buttons. And if your calculator has those, then even if it won't kind of let you do those intermediate calculations, what you can do is you can take the log of the bottom. So in this case, I would do 3, take the log, and then I would store that result. So in this case, I would hit store. 
and that little M popped up to say something stored in memory. And then if I hit clear, I can test if I've got the correct thing in memory by hitting, in this case, recall, and there it pops up. So now that I have my, my bottom calculation performed, everything else would just be in a line, and I could do 81 log divided by recall equals and get four. So you might even have to go through that step, but test out the other way I did it first, see if it works on your calculator. So those are kind of the three main ways that I've seen calculators work to do logs. So try to see if your calculator does it one of those ways. Uh, if it doesn't, then uh, if you are in my class, you can send me a Canvas message and let me know what kind of calculator you have and I'll go over how to do it on that calculator. If you are not in my class and you found this video on YouTube, I recommend Googling using the specific model of your calculator. So look, usually it's somewhere up near the top, look for your specific model number and brand name and see if somebody else happened to make a video with yours.